Thanks for being with us. Greatly appreciate you joining us, man, too. Especially after having. last night and everything. You could have canceled big time this and everything. <laughs> he appreciate didn't. It. Hey, Spencer, do you follow the, 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 the season as you're playing? Do you watch other games? Do you get a chance to see who's doing what? I mean, how much of a fan of the NBA are you while you're in the middle of a season? Oh, a big fan. Um, I mean, well, let me not say fan. I, I guess it's more kind of leisurely scouting. Okay. Uh, but I definitely watch uh, League Pass every night. Oh, uh, do you? Things. Yeah, yeah. I watch all the games. Um, you know, it's it's a big part of my life, and I love uh, love doing it. And so, I, people should know a little bit about the, kind of your trajectory and your story. Mm -hmm. At I would say at every point of your basketball career up until maybe three weeks ago, <laughs> a guy that was maybe underrated. That mm -hmm. coming out of high school, you weren't five star recruit. Mm -hmm. At Colorado, yep. it, it took point. some time, and then you, mm -hmm. when you had finally established yourself, you hurt your knee, yeah. right? And that made you go from a guy that was going to be a first round pick to second round pick. You bounce around the G League a bit, a number of stints mm -hmm. down there, and finally get a real opportunity. I would argue last year. I watched a lot of the Nets yeah. last year because I yeah. moved here. And then this year, well, in the argument for the best six man in basketball, yeah. and yes. the Nets rewarded you. You got a, yeah. you, you had a great 24 hour stretch. I think you scored 39 <laughs> points and then got 34 million. I'm not maybe the other way around. How? Well, tell us about the journey. Like the journey from a guy who I'm sure always wanted to play professionally, but I bet even some of your coaches at times were like, "Oh, you can play professionally. It'll be in Turkey. It'll be a nice living." <laughs> mm -hmm. To getting to where you are now. Yeah, uh, I, I mean, I would credit my parents with that. Uh, they never told me I couldn't do anything in my life. Uh, they believed in me from, from the jump, from day one. And uh, that type of belief has been pretty much what's carried me through my career because I've been the kid that was crazy enough to think that he was going to go to the NBA even though he was the 150th best player in his high school class. And, and mm -hmm. that confidence didn't waver. And um, it's what allowed me to you know, keep, keep pushing through barriers and walls and things um, as they've, as they've uh, uh, risen. Yeah, now you've talked about high school not being rated um, that way, but it seems like in listening to you, listening to you on a podcast, reading articles about you, you've always had that mindset that you were an elite talent, regardless yeah. of what people had you rated. Then you got hurt in college. You kind of switched it there that I'm supposed to be a lottery pick. Yeah. So even though you were going through the G League, couldn't find a spot on a roster in the Detroit with, man, they're stacked with guards. You might not ever get an opportunity. You always thought you were an elite player. And how has that transferred over to the Nets? You got a lot of guys with some similar, similar stories. Either didn't get a chance, hurt, mm -hmm. didn't have the type of rep. How has that led you and the Nets to be able to get this type of chemistry that has you guys in the playoff hunt? Yeah, I, I think with all of us having similar stories like that, uh, it kind of creates a bond between uh, brothers that other teams may or may not have. Um, all of us having gone through that fire, we all understand, mm -hmm. you know, what it's like to kind of be an outcast or, or be cast aside. And uh, we, we know how important it is to really come together, work together, and the, the power in the unit. All right, so you did lose last night, but overall the Nets have been playing pretty well in this last stretch. You've won six of your last ten. Like C said, if the playoffs started today, you'd be in it right yeah. now. What, what do you credit to, to this team turning things around? Um, I, I think everybody kind of points to a players-only film session we had where uh, Jared Dudley and Damari Carroll were uh, very vocal. And, um, uh, you know, people think it might have been an airing of grievances or something like that. It really wasn't. It was, it was a lot more technical analysis and, you know, helped our communication as a, as a unit. And then, you know, our organization is first class from top down. You know, Sean Marks is our GM and, and Kenny Atkinson as our coach. Um, amongst obviously our, our massive player development staff and assistant coaches, it just just top down, it's, it's first class, and we're finally getting to reap some of those rewards. Anytime I hear a story about the team, somewhere along there, man, they throw Jerry Dudley, Dudley in there. That's I mean, bad. like, so, yeah. I, I mean, so uh, tell us, man, he, he's part of the mix and. Yeah. In critical minutes, yeah. I have seen you guys put him on the floor, you guys play small, and the type of chemistry you got, and he makes big buckets and makes yeah. big plays. What does he mean to that team right now? Right now, he's, he's like having a second coach on the floor. Yeah. You know, he's, he, he is the vet, you know, um... Like, DeMarco's our vet as well, but... but Sometimes Jared I look at his body, too. I'm thinking, yeah, y'all definitely got a coach on the floor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, no, no. Hey, hey I, I completely understand. Because he got a body built by Hostess Twink, hey, not like Jim hey, I'm not. Hey, I'm not, I'm not, not throwing my man under okay. the bus. I'm not throwing my man under the bus. You can um, tell him CC said it. But, yeah, no, I, shoot, I, I definitely would tell him CC said it. But, you know, he's just like having another coach on the floor. And, and the uh, spacing he gives us at the four spot, being able to shoot the three, and uh, just making timely buckets. I mean, he, he fakes the handoff in critical moments all the time 
time and gets a layup. So, you know, he definitely helps us, and, you know, it's, it's been a pleasure playing with him. And this is something I think some NBA, a lot of NBA fans, and unfortunately even some NBA teams don't understand. When you're, tr when you're in a rebuild, which the Nets were, and now you guys are in the next stage of that, trying to be a yeah. playoff contender, but you can't just have young players. Yeah. You can't just have yeah. kids. Like, Jared Dudley, I, so I know him a little bit as well, and if people look at the contract he has and his points per game, and they're like, wait, what? how yeah. does this make sense? But if you watch the team, they've got to have someone who know, not only is a coach on the floor, but when you start out 8-18 eight and 18 and you have a bunch of really tough, close losses yeah. to where you guys don't let go of the rope, exactly. where you guys don't say, oh, there's going to be another bad season. Because since then, you guys have reeled off 12 of 16, yeah. been one of the best teams in the league. I, that's the coaching, but it's also those two veteran players you were talking about. For sure, for sure, because you got to remember, a uh, coach can prepare us, but like anything else, when you go into the test, he can't go out there and play for you. So mm -hmm. you need your, your brothers to pick you up when when you're not at your best and I think that's one of the things that, that vets do better than anybody regardless of the way that they may be playing that game you know I think young guys tend to fluctuate sometimes game to game depending upon how they're doing individually and, and vets don't waver especially uh, not guys like JD and uh, and DC now, more people need to hear your story it's a remarkable story five times sent to the G League we talked about the injury you thought you'd be a lottery pick to now now you're making custom shoes how do you go from <laughs> from from the, the, the G League? Because I've been cut before, yeah. and I know those kind of things they stay with you and they continue it to was motivate in you. But he was still cut. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> come on now. Now, now you're you're making your own custom shoes. What got you into that? Yeah. And it's, you got to take a tremendous amount of pride into where your life has gone. Oh, definitely. I, I mean, uh, the trajectory and and where we're at now, um, it, it's definitely been a, a fun journey, and, and we feel like there's so much more to go. Uh, with, with the Nets, with me individually, um, obviously with the shoes too. Um, the, the way it all came about, I, I used to draw shoes when I was a kid, and it was something that I did just kind of as a passion. Um, I'm not a great artist in mm -hmm. terms of, you know, a full spectrum of, of uh, different types, but I, for whatever reason, I can draw shoes. Um, when I got back into the league out of the, out of the G League, no marquee brand wanted to sign me. And that's mm. kind of when my mind started uh, approaching, like, what, what would happen if I had my own shoe? What would happen if I took one of these drawings and brought it to life? Um, it's, it's actually not an easy process. And so you know, I have to thank, uh, you know, Project Dream, uh, which is basically a, a set of tools to allow influencers to create their own brand. Um, and, and they pretty much approached me. They, they needed somebody crazy enough to, to, to do it. And mm -hmm. I was in a position to, to try it. And so you know, I've been having a lot of fun with being able to create that. And, and go forward. So a lot of these, so this part I didn't know, I knew there were custom shoes. A lot of these are your drawings? So the shoe itself is my drawing. Now the individual artwork is done by a man named Kikasso. He does a lot of cleats for the NFL. Um, I've heard of Picasso. Yeah. Yeah. I know Picasso. All the, all the, <laughs> so, yeah, all the intricate guy. artwork, like the Space Jam <laughs> shoe, the print shoe, mm. uh, Bruce Lee, all, all that artwork on top of the shoe, um, that's all Kikasso, and, and he's been uh, phenomenal in what he's doing. That's that's really cool, because I know some of the guys, when they don't get the elite shoe companies that want them, all yeah. of a sudden they sign with a, a company in China and none yeah. of us heard about that. Yeah. And, and it, sometimes that's the best way to get a check. Mm -hmm. What you did, that's a really cool thing. And you you're the only guy in the league doing it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Congratulations, man. Congratulations to you and the team. Man, we're going to make some more games this year. Mm -hmm. Need you guys to make the playoffs. We're <laughs> pulling for you on the All-Star, so if you're out there voting, fans. Oh, yeah, I need that. Voting yeah, into the All-Star. And the last net to make an All-Star team, I'm trying to think, like, maybe. Did no Johnson or D-Will? I know they did. I'm wondering if KG got one, like an honorary might one, have, when he was have. there. But yeah, it, it, you're playing like an All-Star. Thank you. You're playing like an All-Star and sixth man of the year. Appreciate Congrats, it. Spence, man. thanks so Thank much. You, really appreciate it. Thank Already you gave joining. you a nickname. Thank You've been here for six Spence, minutes. So. Spence, Spence, that's really good. good. Uh, we got to take a break. Much more first things first right after this. Making shoes. <laughs> he got his skinny suit on. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't in the G League. No Jared mama. Dudley ain't, ain't wearing that suit. <laughs> hey, mama. <laughs> I've arrived, mama. <laughs> thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from First Things First or go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.